I'm Olivia, welcome back to my channel, and today we will be doing a library haul. I don't know why I held this bag up for a bookstore. Looks like I did a book haul from a bookstore. Library haul. Um, I have a lot of books today, so let's get into it. Okay, so the book that I actually went in the library for because I had a hold was The Push by Ashley Audrain. And I put this book on a hold after seeing a recommendation from it on Jordaline Reads. And it was like a pretty strong recommend. So I didn't look too, 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 too much into it because anything that Jordaline really likes, I can bet that I'm going to really like too. Um, I think she's actually a little bit pickier than me and I feel like I'm a pretty picky reader. So it's like sometimes I like things that she didn't like, um, but usually if she does like things then I will like them. But the push, I don't know exactly what it's about. It's a tense page turning psychological drama about the making and breaking of a family and a woman whose experience of motherhood is nothing at all like what she hoped for and everything she feared. I think it's something like she thinks her there's something like really wrong on like a spiritual level not like spiritual like religious but just like on a very like deep level there's something wrong with her daughter not like there's something wrong with her daughter medically but um I think like baby teeth vibes but this isn't a horror it's a psychological drama and I think almost like thriller like in the way that the story is told so I'm really looking forward to this this is probably the next I have a couple of books in progress right now but this is like the one that I really want to get to and whenever I put a hold on something I feel like you really got you got to get in there Olivia you got to read it the next book I picked up, I think also because of, I don't think, I don't know that I've ever seen a video where anyone's recommended this, but this book is on everyone's bookshelf behind them on a horror tube. And like it's on Jordaline shelf, it's on, um, oh my goodness. Why can't I think of what her, Kasha's Book Cemetery, I think is what her channel's called. Um, it's behind her, and so I've always been very intrigued, and I saw it in the graphic novel section at the library today, and I said, you know what? I also don't need to know what this is about. The cover looks cool, and I figure, even though I haven't seen anyone like directly recommend it, and I think it's probably showing just because it's such a good cover on their shelves, that they wouldn't show it if it was actively bad. And I will read basically anything if it's not actively bad. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to my favorite thing is Monsters by Emil Ferris. And it's a, yeah, like I said, a graphic novel. Um, and it's like on these lined pages, like a, like a notebook. So this is also called volume one, book one. So I assume there's going to be more at some point. Um, this one is from... trying to see what year this was published 2016 2016 and I haven't seen another book come out since then I don't think um, but that doesn't mean there isn't one it just means that I'm not aware of it sorry you'll probably see Daisy in a lot of my videos because she's nosy nosy it's also really really hot today this is like the first really hot weekend that we've had i live in south louisiana so not only does it get really hot but also really humid um and i just got back from my library trip the farmer's market and like some shopping downtown so i've gotten maybe even a little bit sunburned today i wouldn't be surprised if i'd gotten a little bit of sun but daisy's probably also looking for a lick of some cold condensation <laughs> both of my cats are struggling they're both um 
like medium to long haired cats and so during the summer they shed extra. The next book that I have is Milk Blood Heat by Dantiel W. Moniz and this is a book that I'd seen the cover of and I've seen people recommending on Bookstagram. Um, I believe Lupita Reads and I don't remember who else recommended this, but it's a short story collection set among the cities and suburbs of Florida. So I figured with how hot it is today, if I wanted to get into something that's a little bit more literary, like if I need, um, it's almost like my horror reading and my literary reading are palette cleansers for each other. Like I, I, notice like if I read a couple of horrors back to back that I start to compare the tones of them too much and sometimes like I don't think that they have the full impact that they could if I was alternating um and the same thing for literary fiction like sometimes I'm just not like ready for another read where I have to invest a lot emotionally so I like to have like the balance of the two this book just came out in March of this year, so pretty new. And look at that cover. Hey! Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. We're styling today. This this is the picture. This is the one. Um, <laughs> I'll have to take a picture later because, wow, I'm really, really matching today. The next book I grabbed today was... Flavor by Odalengi and I picked this up because even though I haven't bought it because I'm trying not to buy too many heavy books because I'm planning on moving to Australia and I honestly don't know what I'm doing with my books as is so anything that's super heavy is not on my list to buy right now and especially cookbooks like I love my cookbooks, but I could, you know, go without um, for, for a while and pick it up from the library. And this is not a vegan cookbook, but I think because it's so like a vegetable based and whole food based that a lot of it is just instinctually vegan and or can be made vegan pretty easily. Like I just looked at a recipe and it was like everything was vegan except it's a vegetable or chicken stock. So lots of, yeah. It's just like most of the, the vegetable like recipes that I'm turning to either are vegan or could easily be made vegan. You just use vegan butter instead of regular butter. It's not that different. So really excited about this one I can't wait to like look through it because I I usually buy my cookbooks I, I don't actually really get cookbooks from the library that often even though it seems like it would be a good idea because you could go be craving something and be like oh I want to know how to make something Italian for dinner tonight and just go grab a cookbook from the library and then make it rather than like I don't know my cookbooks sit around for a while and I've never been in the mood for some some of the cookbooks that I've bought before. Okay, and let's see what's next. I picked up this from the new nonfiction that was available at the library on Juneteenth by Annette Gordon Reed. And it says a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Um, but just a history of, of Juneteenth and I'm not sure if it's just like the history of like that actual day or then also I think it's just a history of that actual day I don't think it's like really like the cultural history of it since that time which I think um 
I just saw right before that I started this video that it was just made a state holiday in, here in Louisiana. And I know that one of the local colleges just made it so that like schools, schools are closed on Juneteenth and, and the appreciation of it as, um, you know, a day of remembrance and respect. Um, and so I think that there's new cultural history to it, but I would like to know, I was never taught about this in school, never never once never once did the word Juneteenth slip from any of my teachers mouths and I think um, you hear a lot of horror stories I think about the the American history that's given to American kids in in public schools and I mean even more so in private schools but in public schools and especially in like Texas and the South that I think there's a lot of um, talk about the the very like narrow viewpoints that have been presented on American history and so that's important to me to like fill in those gaps I don't think that I had like as bad of an education as like I hear from other people about like the kinds of things that were they were told and you know especially about like the civil war and stuff like that like i don't think that my experience was as as truly misguided as like not even the word just like true like outright lies and um misrepresentation of of the history of the civil war um but was not told about Juneteenth. <laughs> that all that goes to say, not told about Juneteenth. So I, I do find it, um, think that it's a responsibility of mine to, to fill in that gap. And this is just about like 130 pages. So I plan to read this prior to Juneteenth, which is coming up. Maybe, I don't know what day it is today is the problem. I think it might be the 12th. Um, so within the next week or so. I would like to read this before then and I think I, I that that is achievable whether I will read all of these books in the next week to be determined um, the next thing I picked up is a poetry collection called mother of chaos queen of the nines poems by Kelly Clayton and I found this on the the new nonfiction shelves because for whatever reason the new poetry poetry is put in together with nonfiction. you know like there's a, a fiction floor of my library and then there's a nonfiction floor of my library and poetry is shelved on the nonfiction floor <sighs> kelly clayton is a louisiana creole woman and she lives in lafayette so she lives local to me and i hadn't heard of this collection but i saw on the back that it's blurbed by jericho brown um, who won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry for the Tradition, which I read last year and absolutely loved. I am not a, I don't want to say I'm not a poetry person because whenever I actually like am in the right emotional, I feel like poetry takes so much energy from me to put in to really appreciate it because it's like my eyes can glance over the over the lines but to like actually like think about word choice and what's being conveyed I think is I'm not frequently in that headspace and like and because I'm not frequently in that headspace sometimes I forget that I even like to read poetry but Jericho Brown I did love the tradition and he is from Shreveport which is my hometown and so also a Louisiana poet and um, also blurred by Thomas Parry, who is a from the Choctaw Apache tribe of Louisiana and um, is also a university professor. So I just, uh, it's important to me that I'm reading stuff that is local to me and I find that Louisiana is a, a big cultural hub for so many reasons. Um, not just New Orleans, which I think is what everyone thinks of first, but the whole Gulf Coast just has so much history and tradition. Um, 
and such a mixing of of cultures here truly so I think it's important to me that I'm reading stuff from Louisiana and I'm really excited to get to this and I think that I, I will soon um, I mean explored by Jericho Brown Jericho Brown I'm really excited really excited so and who knows I might get to meet her because she lives in the same city as me okay so that was those were all the books I got today but I might as well show you the books that I got last week, two weeks ago. Um, yes, those are water bowls that I keep up there for my cats because they like me to watch them drink water. Um, if I keep them up there, then they don't drink out of my water glass, which is what happened before. No one, no one is bothered with you, Daisy. Keep, keep going. Um, but I might as well show you the books that I got last time too, because this is my first ever library book haul. So these are in a different bookstore bag. This is my favorite bookstore, Blue Cypress Books in New Orleans. And I love this bag so much, so much. And this is like the only place that I actually like keep pens. So this is like my perfect tote where it has like a really good, like thick, this, seam too and not just like this you know what I mean all right so the first book from this bag is the elementals by Michael McDowell I have heard a lot about this book and I think it's set in the summertime I think it was on someone's summertime horror book recommendations which is why I picked it up but then it's also the horror in 24 pick for July. So I had already started it. I was just like a couple of pages in and then I saw that and I said, you know what, let me stop. I'd rather read something like this, which is kind of a, a, a horror. Do we want to call it a horror classic? I think Michael McDowell has been kind of re refound as a, as a respected classic horror writer. And if you don't know, he wrote the screenplays for Beetlejuice and The Nightmare Before Christmas. Like that to me is horror royalty. That, those were the, that was the, the films that launched a thousand ships, a thousand ships of hot topic dreams that so many of us grew up on and inspired us. And even if we're no longer in our hot topic phase that, that it was still meaningful. So for me, that's, that's horror royalty. This is about, um, some families who like have like houses next to each other on Alabama's Gulf coast, three Victorian houses rise above the shimmering beach. Two of the houses are habitable while the third is slowly and mysteriously being buried beneath an enormous dune of blindingly white sand. I don't want to read anymore because like I, I really think that I'm going to like this but that's like a very interesting premise to me that there's like this oh I love hot horror and like the Gulf Coast that's where I live like come on there's not a lot there's not a lot that's set here I'm I'm really excited to get to this one so that'll be a July read for me so I checked it out of the library a little bit early but you know what at least I have it then I checked out The Remaking by Clay McLeod Chapman. I checked this out because I read Whisper Down the Lane from um, from him that came in a Nightworms box. And I really loved that one. I thought it was, was really cool. Sorry, Daisy was getting in the window. I thought that one was really cool, so I wanted to check out to see what else he did. I just thought he had a really cool tone in what he was writing, and it was something where there was ambiguity, and like it kind of like soaked in what it was. So I, I think that I will like this too. In the 1930s, a mother and daughter are burned at the stake as witches. Their story inspires an urban legend told around a campfire in the 50s, a 70s horror flick, a 90s meta remake, and a true crime podcast. But all the storytelling comes with a cost. That sounds so cool. It sounds so cool. I love, 
I love witchy stuff. I like um, cyclical urban legend kind of stuff. This one, this one's coming up soon for me too. I mean, hopefully all these are. Hopefully I'm gonna get through these pretty quickly. And then the last three are all nonfiction reads. Um, the first one is Playing in the Dark, Whiteness in the Literary Imagination by Toni Morrison. If I was asked to, to tell you my favorite author, then I, I think I would, I would have to say Toni Morrison just because I've read the most from her and everything that I've read has been incredible. Like it's confusing to me why I have not read her entire bibliography at this point because um, they're all so good, so good. This is critical literary theory about um, blackness in literature and how white authors use black bodies in, in writing. So I'm I'm really looking forward to reading this. I, I kind of wish that I, I haven't decided to, if I just want to get my own copy, because I, I think I'll probably want to like mark it up and annotate. And I don't know, maybe I'll read this and then get another copy if I think that's something that I need to do. So really looking forward to reading this. And I didn't realize how short it was either. It's only about 70, 80 pages. So hopefully reading this soon. And then the last two books, I hope I'm gonna read them. I hope I'm gonna read them. I don't know that I'm going to read them. Um, I would like to read them. I would like to be a person who has read them, but to think about the physical act of sitting down and reading these books cover to cover, I cannot visualize it. I don't think that's in the cards for me. I'm gonna show you the books We'll figure out if it's in the cards for me. So the two books that I got were Audubon on Louisiana, Selected Writings of John James Audubon, um, which was edited by Ben Forkner, and Adventures of a Louisiana Birder, One Year, Two Wings, 300 Species by Mary Beth Lima. Lima, Lima. This I think I'm more likely to read. This one that's like writings from John James Audubon, very cool to me but I don't know that I'm actually going to read it. I love birds. I love the birds of Louisiana. And it's one of the things that I'm gonna miss the most, honestly. I love just the elegance of egrets and the, the proud stature of a pelican. But am I gonna read these? I don't know. I am. I need to check to see if they're on audiobook because this is the kind of stuff that I would love to read on audiobook, but I can't see myself sitting down and like reading it like this, even though I would love to. I never pick up a book from the library if I think I'm not going to read it, but like since they've been sitting here the past couple weeks, I haven't once thought like, mm, you know what I want to pick up? The writing of John James Audubon. It has not once crossed my mind. So, we'll check to see if they're on audiobook. Probably not because people don't like to put money into things from Louisiana. This one was published by LSE Press, which is cool. Oh, these were both published by LSE Press. If you're interested in nature writing, I would suggest getting stuff from Louisiana. We have so much cool nature. So, Maybe I'll be reading those, but you may never see those books again. This may be the last time. Anyway, I just, I love birds and that's why my channel, hopefully, is named um, AV Club. The AV part is from birds, avian. So, may or may not be reading these and then of course the other part of AV club is like because it sounds like AV club 
No one cares. No one cares. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for this library haul. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know if you like library hauls. Let me know if you don't let me know if you don't like library hauls. Don't do it. Don't do it because that's what I do. I don't go to the bookstore and buy lots of books. Um, these are kind of like my TBRs because like between the library, my library app, which is where I listen to audiobooks and read a lot of ebooks, and my Nightmares package, that's basically where I get my books. So these are kind of like my TBRs too. Um, I would be surprised if I ever came out with a different kind of TBR video. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much. I hope y'all are staying cool this week if it's hot where you are too. Um, and if not, then I'm really jealous. Thank you. Thank you for staying cool.